This tutorial covers the basics of using timelines and keyframes on the Cayenne and Carrera switchers. In this tutorial, we will use the Master EMEM Timeline Edit Menu and the switcher's EMEM Edit Keypad to build and edit a timeline effect. It does not matter which interface is used as both methods of control produce the same results. Start building an effect by selecting which parts of the switcher to be controlled on the master EMEM panel and learn the current state of the switcher into an EMEM register. The initial state is also keyframe 1. The difference between a learn and inserting a keyframe is that a learn will erase any existing register contents and replace it with the current state as keyframe 1 whereas inserting a keyframe will add the current state to any existing register contents. A learn will also update the register header information, which sets additional register parameters, such as which levels are being used in the effect. A timeline exists when two or more keyframes exist in the register. A single keyframe effect is simply a learned state of the switcher, whereas adding more keyframes allows an effect to run over time, changing between the keyframe states as the effect runs. ME timelines can be recalled and played from a local EMEM module, but must be built in master EMEM. To illustrate a timeline, we will build a simple keyframe effect using ME1 with a single keyer using an IDPM channel. Here the IDPM is positioned in the top left corner of the screen and this state is learned into register 41. The IDPM is repositioned and changed in size. In the Timeline Edit menu or EMEM Edit keypad, press Insert After to add the new keyframe. When inserting a keyframe, there is a choice of using Insert Before or Insert After. Normally, Insert After is used to insert keyframes later on the timeline, as effects are most often built by adding keyframes after what has already been built. A default time of one second is used to position the new keyframe one second after the first keyframe. This produces a timeline that shows the two keyframes separated by one second. The effect can now be run by pressing the Run button. This will cause the effect to jump to the beginning and run to the end. Any time Effect 41 is recalled, it will recall ME1 to the state of Keyframe 1 and the timeline will be ready to run. The switcher calculates all of the in-between positions based on the start and end points along with the duration of the effect when it is run. The effect itself only contains the keyframe information. As this effect only uses ME1, it can also be recalled and run from the local ME1 EMEM panel. Remember that the normal operation of building effects stores all the parameters within the register for the selected parts of the switcher, in this case all of ME1. To build onto effect 41, simply reposition the IDPM channel and use Insert After to add another keyframe. As the timeline is positioned at the end of the timeline, the new keyframe is inserted after keyframe 2 and becomes keyframe 3. To return the effect to the start, either recall register 41 or press Rewind from either the panel or the Recall Run menu. Alternatively, you can use Begin to return to the first keyframe or End to go to the last keyframe of an effect. Quite often, navigating between keyframes is easiest by using Previous and Next controls. A running effect can also be stopped at any time by pressing Run while the effect is running. Pressing Run again will start the effect from its current position. It is also possible to jog through the effect with the jog knob on the panel or from the menu or jump to a specific time by entering the time in the window. Now that we have a simple effect, we will next look at editing the keyframes. The basic editing controls of cut, copy, and paste work like those in a word processor. In our three keyframe effect, 
we can change the order of the keyframes by stepping to keyframe 2 and cutting it out of the effect. What was keyframe 2 is now on the clipboard. There are now only two keyframes in the effect. Keyframe 3 has been renamed keyframe 2. As we are at the new keyframe 2, we can now paste what is on the clipboard which becomes the new keyframe 3. The paste operation operates like an insert after. The keyframes in the effect have now been reordered. Copy leaves the keyframe in the effect as well as putting a copy on the clipboard. Any keyframe on the clipboard can be pasted as often as needed into this or any other effect. Delete will remove the keyframe from the effect but not put it into the clipboard. The other main way to change an effect is to modify the keyframe states. To modify a single keyframe, step to the keyframe to be changed and make the changes required, then press modify. To apply changes to all keyframes in the effect, step to any keyframe, make the changes required, then press the mod button on the panel twice, or in the menu press mod all relative. All keyframes will have any changes that have been made applied to them. Other parameters that may need to be modified in an effect are the individual keyframe durations or the entire effects duration. The duration from keyframe 1 to keyframe 2 is part of keyframe 1. Individual keyframe durations are changed by going to the keyframe to be changed. In this case, keyframe 2, selecting keyframe duration, and entering the time required, in this case 10 frames, then pressing either the modify keyframe button in the menu or the mod button on the emem edit keypad. Both the timeline display and running the effect will show the change of duration to 1 second and 10 frames. Sometimes it is required to shorten or lengthen an entire effect. This can be accomplished by using the Effect Duration button. The effect's duration is displayed in the menu as N-Dur, which is short for Natural Duration, or the sum of all of the individual keyframe times. To run the current 1 second 10 frame effect as a 3 second effect, select Effects Duration and enter 3 seconds. There is no need to press modify as the change does not relate to any particular keyframe but the whole effect. The timeline display reflects this change and indicates a forced duration or F-dur of 3 seconds. All keyframes will be scaled based on the individual keyframe times that were entered. It is also possible to return the effect to its natural duration using the original keyframe times entered by pressing the dot button instead of entering an effect duration. When making changes to an effect, it is often useful to make a copy of the entire effect prior to making changes, either as a precaution or to compare different effects. This can be done with the get and put functions. These controls are located in the emem edit area of the panel or under register ops in the menu. Put makes a copy of the entire current effects and allows it to be stored in another register. Press put followed by the desired register location and then press enter. Recalling the new register will show the copy of the current effect. The opposite of put is get. Get will bring a copy of an effect from one location into the current register. Both put and get will erase any existing contents of the destination register. Put can be used with a dot entry to put a copy into the next available empty register location. Get followed by a dot entry will essentially get nothing, which is another way of clearing a register. This is useful in the panel which does not have the clear button that appears in the menu. Other timeline control buttons not covered here will be covered in other tutorials. This concludes the tutorial on basic keyframes and timelines.